So, on a number of occasions, I have uh, I have lamented in the past that Xenoblade Chronicles Let's Play never made it to 100 episodes. Until today. Hello all the crazy people out there, my name is Dragonite, welcome back to Xenoblade Chronicles. This, if my count is correct, is episode 100, uh, thanks to the uh, courtesy of the Definitive Edition and the Future Connected, I guess, expansion? What would you even call this? I don't know. But the, uh, the new story that comes with Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition. So, hooray, light the, uh, light the birthday cake or whatever. Where was I? You can buy weapons and armor in shops uh, to help your journey go smoother. In this chapter of your adventure, you will not find armor along the spoils of defeating monsters, but you may find weapons that differ from what shops have to offer. Okay. That's... Sometimes video games work like that, yes. Uh, quests. There's no lack of people having problems on Bayana's shoulder through completing the quest they give you, so that's just... Quests are the same. All right. And you have one, for example. Um, Haimlin. I know it is no business of mine to ask outsiders, but would you consider assisting us with a hunt? Some of our people sustained injuries with the last one. All right. So that's going to be a, a kill quest. And I need to go beat up some elks or X or whatever. Four X iron hearts are items that we need. And you will give me a lot of equipment and money and whatever for that. All right. That's great. I'll do that at some point, I'm sure. Um, so, uh, some, some things I noticed. One, and if I can play Xenoblade Chronicles in first person, the, uh, if I can get, if I can get you, Dengus, to stay still. Shulk, said stay still. Um, I was kind of, for, for a long time, I was trying to get, like, a close look at Shulk. Alright, whatever, that's not gonna happen. I was trying to, uh, get a close look at the characters and see exactly what was going on with their shading. And... I want to say Xenoblade Chronicles 2 is, is like a, a tune shader. Um, has a tune shader on all of its characters, which gives it a very, very uh, distinct, um, like flat, flat look. And I don't think that's the case here. We seem to be having a, a flat shading on the characters, especially in cutscenes. The, the, the protagonist character models are definitely of a higher resolution than the, uh, the NPCs that litter the world, for reasons that are probably obvious. Uh, but we, we've also got if I can get, like, a look at Melia's face or something like that, which is what I was trying to do before. Um, outlines. And I'm pretty sure the outlines are being done by, uh, like, shell models, which are just, like, the, the inside out slightly larger than than usual. Um, like, skin models around around the existing characters and objects. Uh, that's, that's made an appearance in a number of games. Probably most famously the Okami games do that. And a number of others that do outlines. Um... You have a side quest for me that I'm just gonna I'm just gonna speed through and I'm gonna probably pick it up eventually. Uh, exterminate wind elementals and exterminate water ele elementals. Okay, we can we can accomplish that I guess. Anyway, that's uh that's the sort of thing that I just I just am, am fascinated by in games when I play games. Now that I now that I know how these things are made, um, if you want to to hear more about like shell model outlines in video games, I have uh, a video on that in Game Maker um, that I will probably hopefully remember to link for anyone who wants to uh, who wants to hear more about that. So um, I am I'm I'm going to actually make an effort to do a lot of these side quests, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna read all these all these texts. Just sorry about that. All right, wait a minute. Did we already did we already finish that one? Okay, can I actually mine the ether now? I guess I can. So do I uh, do I need the pick? Oh, is that the item that I picked up not too long ago? That probably is, right? Anyway, we're gonna be getting we're gonna be getting getting something from that. Hello, Caronel is your name. All right, maybe maybe I should actually read this because this seems relevant to ether mining. Um, it it broke already. Durability. Is that, a, is that a mechanic now in this game? Higher ether density on the Bionis shoulder. It seems it crystallizes in a, into a form that's perfect for gems. Uh, just reinforcing the pick isn't likely to improve the yield in practice. Alright, well... I am sure that this is not going to be the end of ether mining that we're going to see. We're going to complete that quest. We're going to get an ether pick. And that is going to... We can actually mine gems, not just the source crystals. 
As you progress through the store, you may be able to attain a more efficient ether pick. Uh, you can mine gems of a higher rank. All right, that's nice. So we got an HP up three, which I can attach to some people, and Karenel's just gonna gonna stand here. Very enchanting. All right, you're gonna you're a nerd. It's a uh, hmm. Speaking of like technical art and stuff. We seem to, we seem to have actual, like, reflections of the skybox on this thing. I don't know if we have a, a full, like, cube map of the entire actual surrounding area or not. I do not have a video on cube map reflections, but I do want to do it eventually. Maybe by the time this, uh, this, this Let's Play is, it's on YouTube, I will, who knows. But it's very, very shiny. Very, uh, very reflective. Were they like that in the original game? I, uh, I can't say I ever I ever uh, stopped for long enough to uh, to really see if they were like that in the original game. All right. Um, is there anything else in this area that I can do? If I like if I go in here, is there anything for me in here? Not really. I can't uh, I can't can't hop on over any of the uh, boxes or anything like that. I can apparently hop on over this way. Can I? All right. The camera is having a a bit of a moment. Whoa. Alright. Maybe I, uh, I shouldn't do that if I don't want the camera to completely go haywire. Let's see. It seems that this is about it. This is just... This is about uh, all there is for this little encampment over, over here. Uh, it is currently 10 p.m. at night, and it is rather dark, and I, uh... I feel like I would be able to see more if it was light, but hey, time of day cycles, what can you do? I can always change the time of day, but if I go into the menu, but... I think, for at least for now, I will let the, the time progress organically. Companion at arms. All right. So I, uh, I assume you you don't get to do very much of that whole talking to people thing. So this is a is this a uh, heart to heart? Quiet moments. All right. Heart to hearts have been rebranded. Um. So there's, that's going to be in a list in the menu, just as the heart to hearts were. All right, I need I need Shulk and the uh, the pink knop on. Can I uh, can I switch out the pink knop on? All right, let's view this one. This one I will read. I will narrate this. Okay, I guess it's voiced. I don't have to narrate. been looking for you. Something about stubbing his toe? Little Pun, never change. Nay, nay, we'll run back later and go, there, there. <laughs> You're a good sister, Nay, nay. Or maybe more like a mum. By the way, what were you doing out here, Nay, nay? Nay, nay, being reminiscing about Frontier Village, tiny bit. I see. So, that's where you were living before? Yep, in Puzz, Nene always adventure into Magna Forest with Brother Sisterpon and climb trees every day. I assume you were the responsible one then. That silly question. Knock on boys, all good for nothing lazy bones. It all too much for Mama Pon to handle, so Nene have to help take care of Brother Sisterpon and Dad Upon all full up. <laughs> I wonder what Ricky would have to say to that. Dead upon, after he'd chosen the village hero pod to set off on great adventure with Mr. Shulk, house become total pigsty, hungry little pond underfoot everywhere. Wow, I had no idea. Hmm. Wait, was this after Ricky joined us? So that must mean... Yep, before Nene become friends with Mr. Shulk and friends here, we actually meet one year ago, back in Frontier Village. Dadapon, stomach bumbly rumbly. Dadapon, me food. Dadapon, give crap. You're kidding. 
I'm sorry. I feel kind of bad about this now. Though, in my defense, you've really grown. It's almost like you're a whole different Noppa. In Noppa biology, age between 10 and 15 often experience growth spurts. That why, when compare Nene now and Nene one year ago, it's not too surprising if not realize they're the same person. It's still quite a surprise. I never knew that a Nopon could grow that much in a single year. <laughs> now Mr. Shog no can rely on post growth spurt Nene more than ever. <laughs> we can always count on Nopon. Us Homs could learn a lot from you. But Nene had these moments lately when get teeny bit lonely. Hmm? Ah, poor Hom Hom. Mr. Shulk, such chow hound. Uh, I don't think that was me. Nene, prepare some grub. Two sweets. Now, now, Mr. Shulk, go Coquino and Miss Melia and tell to wash up. Really, that's... Hmm. We thought she was so grown up always taking care of Kino. But really, she's just a kid. No wonder she's lonely. Mr. Shulk, something happened? Tell me too rumbly to moo, or what? Wait, I've got it. Mama? I'll round up all the others. Then after, we can all chip in with a meal. It'll be more fun that way. Mr. Shulk, would not say no. So these are uh, these are more like full full acted cutscenes instead of just the simple exchanges that the uh, the heart to hearts were in the um, the original game. Okay, um, Shulk, For what it's worth, uh, between the ages of ten and fifteen, humans typically have growth spurts too. I don't. No, if you've forgotten that part of like late middle school, early high school. Anyway, let's see, uh, what would be a good a good stopping off point? I um, I I kind of kind of didn't do a sign off at the end of the last video, uh, when I entered the uh the encampment because I didn't realize that there would be like a five or six minute cutscene that immediately followed it. Um, I should probably look into equipping companions for him. I should probably look into equipping some of these gems that I'm finding, uh, sometime soon. Let's see, is there anything of interest behind here? Unfortunately, uh, most of, I, that's too steep to run up, most of the appeal of running around and exploring in this game is that you get experience as a reward. Uh, there's not a lot that you can interact with in this game. Uh, once in a while you find like an NPC who's just hanging out at the, at the, uh, the far side of a cliff over here or something like that, but uh, there's no, there's no like, architecture you can interact with or anything like that in interesting ways, which is a bit of a shame from from a, a world building slash world like immersion. I, I really don't like that word because um, marketing at E3 has has overdone it for, for the past 15 years and the word immersion doesn't sound like a word anymore. But um, I wish there was a little bit more in the in these out of the way places other than just um, uh, experience and maybe some implied implied backstory with like the name of the location like the traveler's stopover from what was that the ether mines or whatever or not the ether mines um oh god uh tepper cave i think but that's a uh, that's a very very minor complaint and uh it's just some thoughts that i have about the the design of a uh, a video game so i think now I'm going to start moving in the general direction of, of plot, of the dotted line. And I'm going to uh, probably end this off. So this uh, this video is going to be mainly the uh, the encampment, spending time in the encampment over here at the uh, Companion's Cape. Have I been reading that as cave this whole time? I feel like I have. But, let's see, let me just grab this. I'm going to have a... I have a real hard time resisting the Chinese in video games, not just in, G in Xenoblade, but also in general. Like, if there's... I, uh, whenever I'm playing Skyrim, I always have to just wander all over the path, uh, picking up all the potion ingredients that are just growing, growing here, there, and everywhere. And that, it, um, it's the sort of thing that makes, 
uh, doing doing let's plays of, of this kind of game a little bit difficult because I'm I'm never I'm never running in a straight line. Are you a quest monster? All right, let's finish this off with the battle, I guess. So first, can I get him? Thank you. Uh, first, we're gonna do this. Alright, that was one out of the three of the Wind Nebula. I think I also need, um, three Water Nebulae, which probably is going to be a, an endeavor for later. Anyway, I'm going to end this off here. So, my name is Dragonite. This has been Xenoblade Chronicles Futures Connected. I guess, now that I know that it actually has a name, I should probably call it that. Uh, in the next part, we shall be following the dotted line and probably picking up some more side quests, maybe finishing some side quests, or maybe even both. I hope you all enjoyed that, and I will see you all later. Now you shall witness all power. I'm ready! Power again upon search through Nene. Slitter!